Hello, my name is Ambrose. Today we're going to be looking at bees and bee flies. But first, let's take a look at some non-native bees. European honeybees were introduced into Australia in the 1800s. The buzzing sound you hear when bees are around is made by the wings beating. They beat their wings around 230 times per second. I often see bees visiting flowers. They use their proboscis to lap up the flower's nectar. The proboscis is a long tube-like structure that acts like a tongue. The orange and yellow lumps you see on bees' legs are pollen. They have collected and put into their cubiculi. Each cubicula is a pollen basket used to carry pollen back to their nest. A honeybee visits 50 to 100 flowers during its collection trip to fill her cubiculi with pollen. When she finds a good source of pollen, she flies back to the nest and dances to show the other bees where the flowers are. It's really cute. European honeybees build their nests in cavities like rock crevices and tree hollows. I saw this honeybee nest when I was bushwalking at Chain Valley Bay. The reason I found it was because I could hear them buzzing. Now I would like to show you some Australian native bees. Some species are quite chunky, like our Australian native teddy bear bee, which is furry and cute. Teddy bear bees are some of our buzz pollinators. Buzz pollination is also called sonication. In some flowers, the pollen is held so firmly that it needs extra help to break free. Buzz pollinators grab onto the flower and rapidly vibrate. This vibration causes the pollen to be dislodged and then the bee collects the pollen. Bees are wonderful pollinators. Another species of native bees that perform buzz pollination are blue banded bees. Let's take a look at them. Blue banded bees are solitary bees. This means that after a female bee mates, she builds a solitary nest by herself. She builds her nest in a shallow burrow, in clay soil or sometimes mud bricks. Blue banded bees may build their nest burrows close to each other, like neighbouring houses in a village. They do not store any honey in their little nests, but do collect tiny amounts of nectar to feed their young. They collect the nectar with their proboscis. Their large proboscis looks very hard and sharp, but apparently it is soft. The male blue-banded bees do not have nests, but they do like roosting together on plant stems. They hold onto the stem with their mandibles while they groom themselves and sleep. I often see them expel liquid waste when they're settling down for the night. Their liquid waste is uric acid. And sometimes the males wave their feet when another male comes close to their roost. It's really cute. Another native bee where the males roost together are called lipotrichs bees. Let's take a look at them. And just like blue venered bees, lipotrichs bees are also buzz pollinators. Cute. Another one of our buzz pollinators are carpenter bees. They are large and solitary. They have bright metallic colours that change with the direction of reflected light. Carpenter bees make a loud, deep buzzing sound, which is very different to the European honeybees buzz. Carpenter bees nest in soft wood and in the flower spikes of grass trees. They cut entrance holes into the wood with their strong mandibles. The nest is usually a single tunnel about 30 centimetres long with interconnecting passages. The passages are sectioned off into brood cells. An egg is laid in each cell and left with a supply of nectar and pollen rolled up into a moist ball. The brood cells are then sealed. When the egg hatches, the lover eats the food ball and then pupates. Some species of our bees are quite small, like our native sugar bag bees. They are only about three to four millimetres long. Did you realise that plants communicate with bees using an electric field? It's so amazing. 
When a bee flies close to a flower, the electric charge fields interact and the bee can tell if a flower has pollen. If the flower does have pollen, the bee will land on the flower. When the bee takes the pollen away, the flower's electrical charge changes, so the next bee flying near can tell that there's no pollen and to come back later. The bees take the pollen back to their nest. A colony of sugarbag bees only makes about one litre of honey each year, which bees use to help them survive through the winter. Our sugarbag bees are stingless bees. The stingless species of bees are always social bees and they nest in tree hollows. Only 11 species of our native bees are stingless. All the other native species of bees in Australia can sting multiple times without dying, but they are not aggressive. Another native bee is the Homolictus bee. Many of them have amazing colours. I often see the ones that are emerald green. Homolictus bees carry their pollen on soft, fine, feathery hair underneath their abdomen as well as on their hind legs. These are solitary bees and can nest in deep burrows under the ground. It takes a lot of time and hard work to dig a burrow. Bees can use their mandibles and forelegs to excavate their burrow and can push away sand with their hind legs. While we're watching this native bee dig a burrow, I'd like to give a shout out to this month's Super Thanks supporters. They are Jim Hadjanakitas, L. Johns, Joanna Doyle, Rebecca Morgan, and Simon Morell. Thank you all very much for your support. Some insects that can be mistaken as bees are bee flies. Bee flies are plump and furry, like some of our native Australian bees. But you can tell they aren't bees, because they have skinny fly legs, while bees have chunkier legs. Also, bee flies only have one pair of wings, while bees have two pairs of wings. Bees couple their two pairs of wings while flying, so it can seem like they only have one pair of wings, but they do have two pairs. Just like bees, bee flies have a long proboscis to suck up nectar and ingest pollen. One day you may be fortunate enough to witness female bee flies collect sand into a sand storage chamber at the posterior end of their abdomens. Their abdomens move extremely fast in the sand. They use the collected sand to coat each of their eggs. This sand coating could be for camouflage, for insulation against dehydration, and to mask any biochemical cues that they are bee fly eggs. The coating of sand also makes the eggs heavier. Heavier eggs could be helpful for bee flies because they hover over burrows of soil dwelling insects and flick their eggs into those burrows. Bee flies do this so their larvae can then feed on the eggs and larvae that are in the other insects' burrow. I hope you enjoyed watching these beautiful bees, but I better see you later. So thanks for watching and bye for now. I'll see you on our next adventure. Subscribe and you can join me on our next adventure. Bye.